Well, welcome to Be Free RV. Today we're going to do something totally different. We're going to the National Museum of Funeral History in Houston, Texas. I don't want to stay here, no. Ain't going to keep it low now. If you want to go, let's go. Let's wrap it up and hit the road. I just got an awesome vibe. Striking the wind of hopes now. Liberty's on my mind. Understand that we get one chance, one chance You, you will never regret the things that we'll do Alright, you gotta scope out all the hearses. These are all pretty cool. Starting back here, I guess, the 1900s railroad baggage car. They've got a door off the Company 18 ladder truck from 9-11. Uh, Beautiful hearses, though. The basket case full with coffins. Walk to the back side first. Bronze deposit casket. Let's go about these ones over here. These are pretty fancy. That is glass. Guess you do glass if you want everybody to be looking at you and maybe you get to see out the view. Eighteen thirty two horse drawn hearse and a nineteen hundred children's white hearse. I can see if you can go around back here. And a child's casket. Eighteen hundred. This one here. And the basket case, another basket case in here. So, late 1800s hearse here. 1940 LaSalle Touring Sedan. 35 Studebaker 51 Superior nice a 39 Superior I'm gonna scope this one here out it's a little different convertible Not sure why. And the convertible here is a 38 Henny Packard flower. It's a flower car. That makes sense now. 
why it would be convertible. Thought it was a hearse. Of course, the big New Orleans funerals with all the jazz bands playing. But look at this one over here, though. This is Camp Houston. 21 Rock Falls Hearse. That is gorgeous. Look at that. That is all wood. Built in Sterling, Illinois. This carved panel hearse measures 8 feet in height, more than 19 feet in length. A 4,600 pound vehicle. Hand carved body composed of six types of wood. 29 horsepower Continental. Red Seal engine propels the vehicle. This restored hearse exemplifies the epitome of craftsmanship among hearse builders of the 1920s. That is gorgeous. Look at the detail of this car. window inside that's gorgeous it's a late 1800s horse-drawn sleigh we needed that back in Maine of the day this must be another train cart and over here 29 Studebaker Superior Hearse This is a funeral bus. Never heard of one. Let's we'll see what year it is, but you know she's old. Look at that front end. Drive up here. She'd hold dual, dual caskets. It's a 1916 Packard funeral bus. The only surviving funeral vehicle of its kind, the bus was built by Fifth Avenue Coach Company in New York City. It was originally mounted on a Kelly truck chassis, expected to support, partially supplant the traditional lengthy funeral process. The bus held the casket, pallbearers, and 20 mourners. Wow. Initially owned by a San Francisco funeral home, this vehicle was climbing uphill to, to a cemetery when the weight the aft section caused the bus to tip back. Paul Barrows tumbled, tumbled over mourners and the caskets overturned. In Paris, funeral director removed the bus from service and from its chassis. For the next 40 years, a ranch hand called the funeral bus home. When the California funeral director discovered the bus, he had it remounted on a Packard chassis. Current owner Robert Larrabee returned the bus to running condition. Otherwise, it remains unretired. Tires are original to the bus and are made of hard rubber. Windows and interior design are the art of of the uh, the windows and interior design are of the Art Nouveau period. Radiator and headlamps are brass. It has a Packard four-cylinder engine, which was made for trucks and automobiles, and a three-speed progressive transmission. Packard drivetrain permits speeds up to 10 to 12 miles per hour. Hey, look at these tires. They are looking. Those are all a hard rubber. Even on the front. I think she drips a little oil. Let's go about the inside of this. How would you have fit, what did it say, 20 pallbearers? How would you ever fit? 20 mourners in here plus the pallbearers I can see why should have been heavy on the aft end and tipped over it's all that extra weight back here of all the mourners behind the axle that's interesting that's cool stuff all right let's go in here this is the Moine crematorium oh 
put set with the body ready to go in the oven that's kind of creepy oh look Bert's in here getting ready for her cremation <laughs> hey baby. This is interesting. I get to watch the casket go in the crematorium. I don't know now if I'd want to be cremated. Why? Tell me why you always want to be burned to death. Why don't you want to do it now? Do you not want to be cremated? This is not video of a specific person. You want to be cremated. Why don't you want to be cremated now? Because they stick you in a furnace and boil your butt? Here's the guidelines for making a decision if you'll be cremated or not. What kind of cremation services should I choose? What do I do with the cremated remains? How can I plan in advance? And how do I choose a provider? Choose a provider? I think I'm looking for health insurance or something. Burns through time. Bert says she wants to do something like this with me. Yes. Something happens, I want to have him close to my heart. Ah. I think in reality she's going to turn me to use toilet paper. <laughs> you heard and she can have me close to her ass. <gasps> close to her butt. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, babe. Right? Not a bad idea. I think, I think it's a good idea, turning the toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are some post-mortem pictures. I wouldn't want a picture of me like that. You don't want a picture of one final picture? Oh, God. Would you dead? <laughs> no. Look. What's the matter with that? That's terrible. Ten type of an infant child wearing all white and supported by cushions. 1890. Maybe he's just sleeping. Oh, no way. They're not. Look, would you like the image of a small child monitored on a tent memorial plate? Maybe. No way. Hello. <laughs> Why not? Oh, that's sad. I told her I wanted to do that, her to do that for me, a post-mortem picture. Put me in my Sunday best, which is probably a t-shirt and a pair of shorts. <laughs> One last picture. If that's what you want. I'll do it. Gotta get my tongue out. <laughs> my eyes rolling. <laughs> <laughs> God, these are eerie. But now, why all, f all four together? Well, that might not be. It's, it's a non-postmortem image. Just an example of a family picture. But above it is a picture of Lincoln in his casket. Where? Oh, yeah. Right there. Oh, oh yeah. Let's Jeez. see, we'll have to get this chair. I saw this chair out front. Yeah? It's a post-mortem chair. Oh, okay. It stands you up. Yeah, see, like in this picture here, they got the thing behind the chair holding your head up. Oh, my goodness. That's what this would do. This would hold your head and your body would stay there, see? And that could, was even 1787. Yeah. Front artist of photographer. Uh, they don't do that today. Well, they might. It could be a new business. <laughs> what do you think? New photography business. Taking post-mortem pictures of your family and friends. Yeah, <laughs> That's kind of gross. Cool. We're going this way. Oh, that's a beautiful hearse. That is nice. I'm going to dress like this when I'm gone. Black morning clothes. For your black and morning. I wear it now in the morning. <laughs>
<laughs> Centaur. I wear black all the time. You do wear black I'm all the time. I'm mourning you all the time. Yeah, you are mourning me all the time, aren't you? <laughs> I've been mourning me for years, too. <laughs> <coughs> this beautiful coach, 1888 Kimball Brahm. So is the widow's coach because it's all black. original wake they just put you on the kitchen table I guess people come see you say goodbye oh so we cover with the mirrors they could do what they used to do, cover up all the mirrors put the black drape over the picture and then lay you out in the living room Bert's been laid out in the living room a couple of times. Your grandmother? My mother's mother. Oh. How about that one? That's kind of cool. What the heck? Glass front. Oh, yeah, this one? Yeah, it's got a glass front on it so you can always see your loved one. And they can watch you throw dirt on them as you're burying them. There you go. The embalming room. I knew we had to come to one of these sooner or later. This is the embalming room, Bert. Go in and lay out the table. We'll see if we can get you embalmed. People in every corner of the world have treated human remains in special ways. Depending on the culture, bodies could be set adrift in burning vessels. Pocket on the end is to catch your blood as they drain it. <laughs> That was gross. Wow. You. <laughs> oh, Civil War embalming, the beginning of embalming in America. So they did this in the field. I guess if they had to, I don't know why they were bombing you in the Civil War, I thought they just buried you where you fell. circa 1890 <laughs> that's different the Egyptians had God for everything huh God for the bombing This is mummy in here. They were little people. Looks like they broke his legs. And they got to reside in this beautiful esophagus. This is the International Hall, so I guess International Hall of Hearses. It's a Japanese funeral. It's pretty ornate. This is an 1860s hearse here. A 73 Mercedes hearse it was the hearse used for Princess Grace of Monaco, which was Grace Kelly, right? So 
is an 1850s German hearse. These three don't have any information on them. Alright, take a look at this cool coffins here in front of me. You gotta look at these. These are uh, these are something else. Scope this out. I don't know what kind of fruit or whatever that is. This one here looks like a gas pump. Oh no, it's a Yamaha motor. Outboard motor. Fish. Crab, some type of other. Oh, it's a lobster. A chicken, a leopard, a bull. This guy wanted to be buried in his car. An airplane, an eagle. Let's scope this one out. Fishing canoe. Those are all pretty cool, huh? Got to dig some big holes to put those in the ground, though. Here's King Louis XVIII funeral ceremony from 1824. has a Virginia license plate on it. Rolls Royce Campbell. So this section here is on presidential funerals. Over here is the funerals of George and Barbara Bush, the 41st, 41st president. And then here, presidential funerals. Have it about President Reagan, President Washington, President Kennedy, and over here, this is all about President Lincoln. Saw the picture earlier taken of him in the casket. This is a replica of his casket with him in it, or a model of him. This is his body brain being taken from the train to the hearse in Springfield. There is the funeral train route with all the stops. From DC to Baltimore to Harrisburg to Philadelphia to New York to Albany to Buffalo to Cleveland to Columbus, Indianapolis, Chicago, and then down to Springfield. It's like 1,700 miles or so. How interesting is that Lincoln was really into embalming and started the whole process of embalming the soldiers during the Civil War. He was our first president to ever be embalmed. Which is kind of different, I guess. Over here, this is about President Reagan. Now he went to his library out in California and him and Nancy are actually buried there, which is pretty cool. So I'd say if you're out in the LA area to go to go see that. Hey, I want to thank you all for joining us 
touring the National Museum of Funeral History here in Houston, Texas. If you're out here, you definitely got to stop by and check this place out. It is pretty cool. Just the old hearses and everything are pretty neat to look at. They've got stuff on the presidents that have died, on some of the stars that have died, the whole thing on cremation. It's pretty cool. So I would definitely say if you're in the Houston area, this is a must-see. As always, thanks for watching Be Free RV, and we hope to see you all on the road.